Well, thank you very much for that. Um, this is this is actually meeting number three. I built it as number one online, but uh, we had two last year. Um, we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute. But uh, I'm, I'm Ward Six Councilor Dave Camel. This is Council at Large uh, Steve Winslow. Um, we uh, are here to talk about the revitalization of Traffic Park um, and make sure this is a community-driven uh, development process. So, our agenda. Agenda for tonight. Uh, we'll talk about the progress so far, which is just sort of recap what we talked about uh, in our first two meetings last year, which were March and June, um, where we identified needs and we uh, garnered support and information for the, the CPA application. Uh, talk about the result of that and then outline the process going forward, where we're going to go from here. Um, we're going to talk about landscape architects that, that will be on board uh, for this. Shall we? Chadling Associates, uh, goals for our upcoming meetings that are coming um, two weeks and four weeks from now, and then what our objective is. And then we'll then we'll get to sort of like roll our sleeves up and talk about actual features of the park. Um, so last year, run out of it, uh, last year we had some meetings here. We talked to um, folks, probably those first two meetings, how many people yeah, good. We had yeah, we had probably 15 to 20. 15 to 20 people. Yeah. Um, and talked about uh, a number of things. You'll see, um, you'll see on this list here a lot of things that we outlined and talked about. And we'll get to this in, in the last section. We just pass the ball. Um, and the whole point of that really preliminary. Uh, meeting was to see what appetite there was in the community for sort of a small renovation or a large renovation, uh, and it seemed like most people were really in, in favor of a large renovation. And we used that information and the sort of general direction and concept um, to apply for the first tranche or the first um, bit of, of a grant, which we applied with uh, the CPA. Uh, for CPA funding for 50000 to um, start the design process. And, we, and that process means we'll, we'll hire a, design, um, a landscape architect who will, who will run the, help run the next two meetings in a much more structured way, in a professional way than um, uh, Council Winslow and I, and be able to sort of pr uh, introduce design scenarios and get feedback from you with more detailed design scenarios. Um, so we, we got that information together, we applied for the, for the grant, we received the grant, which was which is great, uh, and so now we're ready to, to start getting, you know, spending that 50000 to get uh, a conceptual design room um, that we're going to sort of take forward into the next step of, of funding. Um, so I, I touched on it a little bit, planning, design, and consultant relationship, we're, we're working with Shadley Associates, um, who will will be the, the subject matter experts on this uh, and help us sort of take our um, thoughts and desires and uh, needs as a community and sort of say, like, what, okay, what actually works, what fits, what do we need to do, how many feet do we need to dig down, what, you know, what, um, what are the ramifications and costs of all this stuff, and get those design documents ready for the next stage. Yeah, Pam Shadley was at the second meeting we had last June, so she came out to explain her role and that so um, so she was here and, you know, uh, so she uh, has a long-term relationship with the city um, working through the Malden Redevelopment Authority their firm and they've designed uh, several parks like Miller Park and uh, Lincoln Common and a lot of uh, the major parks have been they've been the lead designer on the mall so they have a lot of familiarity and they actually did I think in 2007 um, there were some improvements in Trafton and they um, did actually oversee those, so um, so they actually have some you know, drawings already and that type of thing that they can build on. But we, we do need to do more survey work, so that's one of the, you know, the fifty thousand so. dollars. Um, so again, when they come on board, the goals for the next two meetings are going to get. You know, we'll start a little bit on it tonight, um, which is sort of dust up what we talked about last year and get the brainstorming. Uh, and prioritization 
process going again, that we can give them that information, um, and they can combine it with what they know, and then they'll come back to us on June 12th and June 26th, and sort of they'll lead a discussion and, and have design scenarios which we can compare and contrast. Like, I like this from the, you know, scenario A, uh, but scenarios, scenario B, the way it treats the, you know, the top lot is great, but I want the dog part from, you know, so it will just be enough of an example to get our, to get us, um, to get us thinking about the, the specifics. Uh, and what that's going to lead us to is, um, or at least one of the stops along the way, as they start to put that conceptual design together, we'll have enough of, we'll have enough meat to be able to apply for what's called a part grant, uh, which the deadline of that is July 14th. So that grant, um, it, it would pay for up to two thirds of the actual physical um, renovations, and I think, I think is there a limit on it, 400? Well, it's 400, that they would provide 400,000, so then we'd have to find a match of 200,000. Yeah. And so, somewhere we would, on the city side. Or, yeah, we put that together with like another application to the to the CPA, but probably not fully that 200 for the CPA. We, we look for whatever, uh, how we could put that together to lessen the impact on the, on the, on the city uh, and the city's, CPA. are you guys familiar with the CPC? The CPC? And the CDA, so the Community Preservation Act. I don't know what, was well, it 2015? Well, it's two election cycles ago, so it must be yeah. 2015 that was passed. There was a referendum question on the ballot that basically asked all of you want to pay an extra 1% uh, of your real estate taxes to go to a fund that covers a number of um, community preservation goals. So they're, they're open space affordable housing and historic preservation. And so under that, we can, we can put grants, we can put applications in. Um, and actually the Mulder Redevelopment Authority put this application into the CPA uh, to, to, to start this process, which, so that was sort of the seed money to get us rolling. When did that start? That's, when did we start paying this? So the surcharges started on taxes. I, well, that was probably 2017. So yeah, it, was, it took a couple years. You probably already noticed on your real estate tax. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's like, it's you pay me. I was going to say about 50 bucks a month, 50 bucks, 50 bucks a year on, on top of a, you know, three, five thousand dollars. Yeah. And that, that pool now has come in and is sitting there and it's, it's covering a bunch of different projects. So Trafton is one of them. Um, we've got, there's another project, smaller project, the $5,000 grant uh, for some small stuff on High Rock, you know what High Rock is? Um, it's pretty cool. It's sort of the northern part of our war. It's, uh, High Rock? High Rock, yeah. It's yeah, a nice so big chunk of sort of open space that you would not expect to be in the city of Malden. It's all of a sudden. It's not the, um, what's the name of that one up? Not Waits, Near Oak, not, not Waits, okay. Not Waits. So go that's, up, yeah, go up the hill from off Granite Street, and then it's up there, right? Off of Rockingham. Oh, I off of Granite. Should we go up? That's Rockingham. Do you know where Rockingham is? Do you no. know? Yeah, so if you keep going on Granite. You go Grant. It turns into Rockingham. I'm like a crazy. Left. Yeah. It turns, and off of that, there's sort of a path into the woods, and there's at the top, at the top of, of Rockingham. But it's it's a big. You go up there? Yeah. My it's sitting there. Silas is always like, "What's over there?" And I'm like, "I don't know." Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm there with my six and three year old, oh, constantly yeah. trying to make them not fall off of uh, cliffs. Okay, good. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a beautiful view. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's. Uh, now kind of preserved, nothing can be built on. Somebody wanted to build an apartment complex up there some time ago, and uh, a lot of people in the community got together and stopped it. So now it's. Uh, you can just walk up. Yeah, it's great. Cool. But yep, yeah, so that's small, about 5,000 for like picnic tables and stuff like that. And then stuff in other parts of the city, in other wards than ours, cool as ours. Um, so the objective of the park grant, right? Uh, July 14th, and so that kind of that's the that's the process of where we've been, where we're going, and uh, sort of just sort of want to tag team. All right, so, yeah, so time to go. So um, you know, one of the things that always comes up um, when you're working on looking at you know, developing a master plan is to look at you know, what you have, what you like about it, and what um, your priorities are in terms of, of, of reviewing things. So. 
at the March meeting last year, we had the community go through and identify um, what the um, particular concerns were, so sort of the existing conditions of the park. And so, so this is a, a photo of, we had a, a poster, and we rewrote kind of the particular areas. And um, so this kind of first 20 items were really generated from that conversation with the community. And so that was just talking about some basic concerns. And um, you know, the first kind of set were really related to the field. Um, and so and obviously if you've been down to Trafton Park, um, the, the ball field down there, you can see from kind of this aerial footage that the grass is in poor shape. Um, and I mean, other type of things that I identified, I remember being down there and the backstop is getting old and the, the fencing is bent. So people are like cutting themselves on the backstop. Um, you know, there, someone commented the dugouts, um, the water floods the dugouts. Um, there's no shade there for that. Um, and then also the, the outfield fence has problems as well. So those are the type of things that um, uh, were identified. The other thing is that, um, you know, I've been, I actually live on Jacob Street right near the park. And um, a few years ago, I mean, I don't, maybe even four or five years ago, there used to be two little leagues in Walton. There was a east side little league that was based out of Trafton Park. And the west side was, was based out of Dever Park. And um, as sort of participation dwindled a bit in baseball, in youth baseball, there was a decision to consolidate into just small youth baseball. So, um, so there's only one youth baseball league now, and that's really focused out of Dever. So the use and also the care of Trafton has sort of declined. So that was one of the one thing. That's one reason I think we kind of people kind of lean as a community to really look at. Um, you know, the field is a dominant element of the park. And now the primary user of that isn't in existence anymore. So really as a community, we should kind of maybe think bigger as to kind of what the balance of, of that is. And you know, it is an investment. It's, it's anywhere up to $30,000 to replace the backstop in sort of a better condition. Excuse so me. So do we want to make that investment? You've got the text message. So that's, that's the type of thing. Um, I mean, if you go out to the park too, um, there's some you know, very nice pine trees out there, and um, they have shallow roots, so those are affecting um, the outfield, because they grow into the outfield. There is a walking trail sort of around the, the field, and that is very chopped up. So kind of the first kind of question is, you know, as a community, I mean, there's things that, I mean, I'm not an arborist, Dave's not an arborist, so would, what would we be asking the, the landscape architect to look at in terms of those trees? Those are prominent features of the park, but they're also creating other problems to elements of the park. So what should we say to the landscape architect in terms of looking at the whole park? What you know, should they prioritize saving those trees and finding an arbiterist to make sure we're doing what we can. So th that's kind of the first question. So and I'll, I see, and I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, confess my bias right there. Yes, trees. I love those trees. Yeah. And whatever we have. That's what I would say. We should. Have. So so yeah. I mean, I have this little sheet so, as a little cheat sheet. So we're looking for people to, as we talk about these things to kind of think about it. Uh, sort of on we have a rating scale of zero to five. So if you don't think we should change something, put a zero on it. If it's something we should prioritize for change and improvement. Put a five. And you know, kind of in between. If you really think it's something. It's no longer needed, then we put an X there. So, um, so that's what we're trying to get some guidance and thought as we, we can talk about these things. But, um, you know, so, yeah, that, that type of thing. So that's, that's one key thing. Those trees are big, but they're, they're causing some other things. Um, you know, just the grass field itself, um, is that an element um, that people want to have continue out there? It's just like it is a big feature. So, I, like I say, that's something to, um, to look at and think about. So, I, like I say, I encourage people to make, I should do kind of, if you want to do, the thought is you do your own ratings and surveys here. So a, a question, okay. were you looking for feedback now, or is this something we're going to be no, talking about? No, we're looking about? for feedback now. Because oh, because nobody's saying this, anything. Yeah, we're looking to get your feedback right here, make your yeah, notes. Yeah, we're sort of just introducing, and, uh, introducing the, the idea and yeah. um, 
we, we eventually want to do this, but I, I think we should have conversation questions okay. first. And what do you think? Yeah, so. You don't know the um, dimensions of other types of fields, but is there a way to make it a more than just baseball? Um, I mean, I know that there are, I mean, there's different sizes of soccer fields. Okay. Um, you know, in, in soccer, there's like, like youth eight, uh, professional. Obviously, you can have a professional size. Joe might know more of there, there might be the potential of doing a, an overlay with a smaller soccer field. I mean, but that might also then drive you towards having a, an artificial turf versus a national turf. So, but you know, the other thing is, do you need a baseball field here anymore? Would you just grass it? I mean, there are sometimes, you know, you know, baseball fields that are, they, you might just have a backstop and have a grass field and have some bases. So it's a practice field rather than a, a competitive field. So one, one, one thing I've noticed so. is just in the past week, I've actually tried to pay more attention. Yeah. A lot of families are out there playing ball on the field as is. Just families, you know, yes. one or two people or, or maybe a half dozen people just playing ball. So what kind of ball? I mean, is that baseball, softball or yeah, so, soccer? So, or so, so, no, so like, so like baseball, throwing the ball with the children, hitting it. People are using it now. Nothing formal. So just family. So I, I agree with Joe. And there aren't too many parks in the city where dad could take his son or mom could take his son to go to the park and hit off a tee to practice their game because, you know, Bruce Field, there's Little League games on there. Uh, at Kirsten Park, there's Little League games. Trafton, same thing. Um, you know, to, and, and again, it's, I have no... But it's always nice to have a backstop in some place where you could take your child or your child and their friends to, to hit so a ball. So in terms of actual competitive games, Joe, how many, are, are there many scheduled right now at Trafton? Or just uh, it's not, we were, we're, I didn't think there were any. There aren't any. Uh, My son has practiced there with his baseball team. Okay. They, they have permits for that park, but okay. they don't play games. So, there. okay, well, I'll be in a little bit because my, my son just started T-ball, so they, they the, the youth baseball will have it like it's a backup to the backup field, so we're having all those rain, all that rain, and like other fields got a little bit uh, messed up, or they got soaked and they don't want to, you know, cause permanent damage, they, they went over the trap. And there was a softball game there. It was an organized softball. I don't know who it was. I'm, I'm sure other organizations will get a, um, a permit. I don't know. That was more the Catholic girls well, that rent their failed. That's so, so just sort of the question, because I mean, you have a big park that's just dirt. Yeah. And that's a, a feature of a, a my, baseball or softball. Well, my, my, my opinion. You can have a backstop and have grass. So that's, I'm just throwing my, it out my, there. My, my, my opinion. So there's a balance so in, in, in her. In, in my opinion, something you mentioned earlier, um, just for general all purpose, just make it all grass. It's, we're not really getting any value out of the dirt part of that field right now. If it's all grass, I guarantee you more people will use it more. Right now, people are doing things like walking their dogs. They're hanging out. I see lots of Strolling. I mean, they shouldn't be walking their I dogs know, on I that part. But, <laughs> but it's so attractive. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. that's one thing we can actually, you know, we're, we're not, there's no dis design decision today, but we could ask the architect, well, show us something that's all grass show us something that has an infield. So that's something that could be looked at for the next meeting. So, so I think that's some guidance we could say. And so yeah, two things I want to do is I want to you know, talk about Joe's perspective a little bit more, um, and, then, and then also just kind of, um, you know, there's fewer people here, so we can kind of talk a little, talk a little bit more before we kind of come in all over stuff. As, as the recreation director, I just, I just want to see the parks used to their fullest, mm -hmm. whether it's a soccer field or a baseball field or an all-purpose field whether it could be lined for cricket, it could be lined for little kids soccer, or whatever. I just want to see the parks full. I don't like going by a park and seeing an empty air. Um, so well, I think having all grass, with grass with might give an option for you. Yeah, to right. Yes. Yes. But thinking further down the line, I mean, those class, <coughs> school classrooms are getting larger and larger, and there's more and more kids, and there's more kids wanting to play baseball. What happens if they do need to start utilizing this field more in five years? So can we just talk for a second about the, the trajectory of baseball numbers versus in, versus other sports, right? So I think... Can I, can I talk about yeah, baseball? Yeah, that's kind of setting up for that. I, 
been around for a few years and it originally started off with four leagues, Northern, uh, Eastern, West, and uh, Southern. Uh, and uh, it was all four corners of the city. And as years passed, the numbers went down and uh, it turned into two leagues, like we talked about earlier. And now finally it's down to one league. And every year the trend keeps going down. Uh, more people are playing lacrosse, more people are playing soccer year round. So I can't, I'm not a, I can't predict that baseball numbers won't go up, but if I was a gambling man, I would say that they're not gonna go up. They'll stay the same <coughs> unless there's a giant push that we find baseball players somewhere. Uh, that's or just similar to soccer or other, yeah. Versus other. And we, we, have, um, we have some features of the park here. Now, can you see the numbers up there? Yeah. Uh, two. So yeah, so 12 here, this is like a batting cage. It's like just a cage of chain link fencing. I don't know if anybody uses that. Uh, I mean, they I've have organized before. baseball, which is played down at Kirsten Games and at Deva Park. They use those batting cages. Yeah. Mom and Dad, I'm going to take Mary and Tommy down and use the batting cage over here at Trafton Park. So it's kind of I don't know. It's I don't unused. go by that. I don't right. go by that. We do. We do have new, brand new, year old batting cages that are safer down at Maple just down the street here. Yeah. So yeah. If someone really yeah. wants to use a nice batting cages, those were built with CDBG money, so they're public and that that I mean, rather than I mean, the thing about this cage out there with you know nobody maintaining it. It's it's dead goes, space. They, yeah. They put yeah. they put netting in it, so when you hit the ball, it doesn't bounce back at you. But without netting, it's kind of dangerous even. So, mm -hmm. so I, maybe that's something we would say. We're yeah, open to mixing that. So do you think? Well, Les, do you think that? Are you concerned that, that if, if we were? I don't think we would, would we get rid of the baseball field or just make it more like more grass. If we make it more grass, then it's more general purpose. Yeah, yeah. People are going to come and practice. Baseball there, anyways. Right. Well, this is also concerned. But when well, nice no, it's it's just I just see more grass. I see more maintenance, more upkeep, more dogs on the grass, like long. I just see a lot of other. We got to figure out how to deal with that. There's a sign on the fence now saying no animals allowed, and people bring their dogs in there anyway. That's separate. I mean, so that's we don't want to sign around people. Who so I, I mean, I'm not. The Sorry, I just no. I want to get what you. Yes, what are you guys say? Yes. I'm, oh, I look uh, like you're a cat. So, I mean, they, the D, DBW does have to go out there and mow. It's a little bit of extra effort to mow it. I mean, if it's maintained well, they would aerate it. It might actually be a little bit easier to, to aerate and maintain a bigger grass field. A small grass field is maybe even a little bit harder to maintain. So, so I mean, I think particularly if it was, you know, you don't have, you know, you don't have games on a grass field. You have games on with the infield if it's baseball. But there's just a little more versatility. Um, like I say, now, like I say, now that baseball is not a major use of the park, it opens up the idea of if you had more grass, there might be some more. You, you know, like soccer could come in there, or kids could play you know, that way. And especially, I you know, like we find on the Fourth of July, the, the infield's really muddy, and so there's some downsides. There. Yes. So, and you can, like I say, there are practice yes. fields that little leagues use where. It's a grass field that just has a backstop. So you can, we can still have a backstop. We can still have facilities for practice, but you know, there's other fields in the city that are the, the places where the games are played. So, so that's, that's a possibility, I'd like to say. Can I throw in a suggestion for something that's literally not on this list? Okay, sure. Has anybody considered a community garden? So There's plenty of dead space that's not being used for anything out here. Yeah, like what, so if we can move, I don't know if we can, well, yeah, is that so like whole section that I, can walk like, like from the upper left, left corner, about for instance. Go back, let's see. Yeah, about 12. Yeah, so um, you can yeah, see Yeah, like that whole area, what yeah, is like that right supposed here. to be? It, it's used for nothing. Okay. It's a bit of a slope, so it's a potential. I mean, I guess the, the question would be, I mean, that's a community garden. You have to have enough people to want to do it and a shed and water. I mean, it's possible. So how much so I might do it myself, but we have one down the how bike much path. Use it'll be easier to have it here. How much use does the community garden so. get on the bike path? Hmm? What? How much use does the community garden get on the bike path? 
a lot. We're as a, ma- as a, so they have, I think, a lot. So they have we're going to 120 yeah. beds. I walk by there most weeks. Like, for instance, so, next month I was invited to attend one of the community gardens on the bike path, yeah. um, sponsored so, by Fugi. So, I mean, because there's already water trapped in, that's kind of one of the requirements. Um, we might have to put an extra water line in if we're going to do it in this area. I can't remember. I mean, it may, might have just generally came up as it wasn't listed as something that was, was added on. I mean, you know. You know, one of the dynamics with community gardens, if you're in a neighborhood where people are living in two and triple deckers, people have that land in the garden, so there's a little bit more. So the bike paths are along that kind of neighborhood. You know, around Trafton, people have bigger yards, so you can have your own garden. I mean, so it's, it's a little bit, you know, but it, I, it's a potential thing. Like I say, that's something that, like, in a master plan, we could look at that. I mean, what we might want to do if, you know, I, I worked on gardens in Gloucester, and what we did, I knew there was a really, there was a spot just like this in a, in a, in a park, and what we did was, I didn't know if it was gonna be a community garden or not, but I made sure I brought water to it, so we brought a water spigot to it, and then the community garden program eventually did, so that's the type of thing. We, we, you wanna make sure you build the infrastructure to do that, and then if, you know, community gardens are built by the community, so, Right. The, the, you, so you, you build the infrastructure. The water is the key infrastructure there. So, well, maybe, so maybe that, like I say, that's a good idea to bring. So why don't you shoot? I mean, if you're bringing water in there, I'd rather, I'd much rather see a splash pad because it gets so, so hot. So there's my You can do. Yeah. Like in the summer, it's so hot and there's nowhere like shade and it's just. Yep. Yeah. yeah the other thing I was going to say is maybe trees and picnic benches, but yeah. splash pad. Pitching picnic benches and. Yep. How about it's the splash pad where the um, current batting cage is? That's dead space as well. And it's yeah. closer to where the water is. It's close to the street. Yeah. That would just be A kids running around very close to the street. Well, we, so, so right here is where the top lot is. Yeah, I know mm-hmm. the, the top lot's right there. But, but that, that's next to the street as well. Just extend the top lot. But the top lot's all mulch. You're going to put mulch and water together? No, I just meant... I just no, meant just, just a pet. It's like a pet. Okay. This is an example of something that's fenced in. Oh, yeah. You okay. can fence it in, obviously. Like, right. yes, the control. I mean, and, and there's all different sizes of oh, splash pads. Yeah. You could have the whole park be a water park, or you can do yes. a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it's actually interesting, because in terms of a park grant, you put a so, water feature in, you get more points. So it's Yeah, like, so when... Sort of like I mean, I, I picture... Again, I don't want to steer. I want to hear from everybody else, but like... I picture, I want more trees. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yes. there, like in, um, yeah. I was thinking trees and picnic benches. Right? Yeah, I love picking benches and trees. Because like, and I like going. I go there probably every day. Yeah. With my want shade? You want a sit place yeah. to sit down? And I'm always just like, like yeah. he's running around, and I'm like, it's hot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you sit four, four years old? He's gonna be five. Yeah, it's brutal in the summer. Yeah, it's brutal mm. in the summer. Yeah, 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 that'd, be, that'd be a perfect place. I know. Some yeah. Actually, use the tennis. I feel like we have no basketball courts anymore in this so, area, um, and I'd love to see basketball. Um, I, actually, I don't know if I can go down and show you some ideas. Like, like, is that is the picnic? I mean, the tennis um, is that another place to be multi-use? We, you know, originally there were basketball courts right. 20 years ago. At 2007, they ripped out the basketball courts, so put in the nice. tennis courts. Um, I mean, I say they get modern use. Um, there are, they are, you know, I live right into the park. Right, I mean, so they yeah. are getting some use. Um, I, just feel I like mean, when there were basketball courts, I would say they would got more use. Um, and my concern is because the other park lost the basketball courts right, too, right. so there is, there's not anymore. So and potentially you, you could do something like this. You can the the, the, the the surface of the tennis courts right now is at least 12 years old. Yeah. It's getting to the point where it needs to be resurfaced anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. Here's a place where they so were able to overlay, idea. you know, a basketball court into a tennis court. Yeah, so you that's could, good. We could. Mm. We wouldn't have to necessarily do one or the other. Do one or the other. You could have a little bit of both. Or, like so, or is that a place for a splash pad? So, so I have to feel like that's that's huge. That's a huge splash pad. Mm. So, I mean, the other thing is, it's a hundred thousand dollars at least to re to those that that the tennis court area yeah. is worth a hundred thousand dollars. So I mean, that's, know, like, as we're planning a six hundred thousand dollar project. Know that a lot of that's still there. you know you're cutting up. So that's, that's actually a good caveat for the whole process to so, remember. So, so we're going to come up with all of these so, ideas, and even after the, yeah. we talk to the landscape architect, 
there will be a, a master plan and a wish list that's this big, and then what's probably going to happen, <laughs> we'll have to have priorities on that, it's probably yeah. going to get whittled down to this, and be like, hopefully we can get this done in five years from now. So, so I, 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 see there's, I was there the other day just looking at all, because I forget what it looked like, but you have two tennis courts there, side by side, correct? Yes. Yeah. Right, yes. That's, you know, what if you took one of those tennis courts away and you put a basketball court, right. a half court right. one, on one of the other side? And again, you could line that for anything. You could line it for uh, volleyball, uh, for the basketball court. You bring in a couple of those portable volleyball nets and you could set those up also. I love whatever that little, like the little uh, picnic, picnic area. I love that. Oh, so this year? Alone. So, this is. Because there was, there was a suggestion, you know, in the past there's been a couple storage containers that have been used as concession, and then for 4th of July we have like a tent. You know, could you, in the area behind where the backstop is, this would be kind of a cool thing. You that know? would be personal. Oh, really? I mean, that, that is, you know, and one of the things, one of my, my neighbors, um, he's at the North Sea, he, he spoke in the carpentry program, and you can actually put in projects for them to build stuff. Which call it a pavilion? That would be yeah, great or, for um, the, or, Yeah, yeah like a pavilion. That's what they know. have at the front eggs, right? They call them the pavilions and they're just... Yeah, and like I say, that would be use. something that could be used on 4th of July. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. you know, I mean, I don't know, and, uh, like, especially. licensing, but, like, you can... But, like, my, my backyard's, like, this really awkward, like, hilly kind of backyard. It's skinny and weird, and I can't, like, I can have a birthday party in the backyard, but right. not anymore. You know, like, you, that'd be a great place yeah. for me to really, like, have, have a birthday have, party there. You can you have a birthday have, party like, there, bro. Well, yeah, you, you don't have to like, you, I hate getting in, in the sun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but I you like can, I, I have had that. Yeah. Um, you can go get a permit, it's yeah. 25 bucks or whatever, but go get a permit to have uh, a birthday party at a bar. But that would... That would be perfect for that. That would make more. That would make more. Yes. Maybe a pavilion with power outlets. Maybe. Yeah. Wi-Fi. And we do that. We do. No, but if there's a huge need. Right. For that. For birthday parties. For graduation parties. Yes. Yes. Exactly. I mean, so this might be something like I say could get in the master plan. Yeah. It may not be part of the park grant. It might take a different track, but we could. Make sure we have the water and the power, right, at least the conduits to have it, right. and just have the footprint for it. Mm -hmm. And then, like I say, then we, like I say, the Northeast Boat. I don't know if you ever been up to um, Breakheart Reservation. They have a beautiful lodge there that yep. was built by the Northeast Boat. Oh, wow. So they do do these That's community fun. projects and like. Literally, I, might, I think my neighbor, he's a sophomore in the property program, so maybe we could, like, <laughs> it'd be perfect timing to right now, um, you know, to get them involved, um, you know, and so that's, that is, that there's that opportunity there, to, um, and I think that's a nice scale building and that type of thing, and, yeah. um, I can see there's that, that potential, so that'd be, um, so, you know, look at in the master plan of just a footprint and infrastructure for that. How painful is it? Not to have a bathroom there for people bring kids. And stuff. You know, here's the good mm. thing. We have a porta potty. Here's a little story I tell. Um, I was working on a somewhat bigger park in Gloucester. We had three community meetings, like we're leading into. The community was, um, we want a bathroom. We want a bathroom. We spent sixty thousand dollars putting in a bathroom, and the DPW would not unlock it because they couldn't. So we spend ninety five hundred dollars a year on putting up the porta potties, and it's it's simpler. But what you can do is you can do a structure that the porta potty can sit in. It's just I can say that that way we have a vendor who's responsible for cleaning it, for putting in the toilet paper. And but for ninety five hundred dollars a year, what yes. you wouldn't want to have to spend after sixty. But could you pay a vendor to come clean the bathroom? So. So, no, we get that. yeah, I, I, like I say, it's, it, that is a type of thing. I mean, that was our hope in Gloucester that mayor, that one mayor committed, that mayor left, and then they didn't fund it. So, well, yeah, so, it's, yeah. Like, so most of yeah. the things we do, we, yeah. we fund, and then we need to cut money. So, it gets cut. So, it, it's, it is something we could so. possibly, I mean, this is, this is designed to have bathrooms there, but it, it is an issue. And, um, you know, one reason a lot of communities went away from having public bathrooms in their park. I mean, there's the issue of um, maintenance. There's the issue people. of people, um, vandalism. 
you know, the porta potties, things are like, you know, you, you take out an insurance policy, they're plastic, there's, you know. You don't have to worry about people ripping the sinks out. And yeah, you know, right, yeah, for metal and that kind of stuff, you know, someone's trying to, you know, rip the sink out. But you do have to worry about washing stuff. machines. What, what? Remember that? Oh, well, people putting washing machines? Somebody shoved a washing machine in the, in the porta potty in Trafton Park. Okay, I don't remember And that, I, I stopped you know, by and I heard about it and I had to take sure. pictures. I was like, that's so crazy. I, you know, it is a type of thing, like when that building is looked at, then, yeah. but I, there's, there, I, I don't know if we, if there's not, um, I mean, even Pine Banks, which is a, you know, we spend a lot more money on Pine Banks. They don't have, you know, public bathrooms. They, they, have they did. <laughs> they did, and they, they stopped because then you have, you know, the other thing is, you know, water. So, but yeah. it's something. All right. So, how about we take a second and you just, okay. I mean, this is a good okay. sort of inspiration for different things. Like, I'm on picnic tables, I think we're on the same page. Yes. So I like picnic tables. What is that supposed to be? This? This is like a big shade structure. Well, what, what in, the, in the March meeting from last year, there was a comment about, you know, one of the challenges is that there's not a lot of places for teams to play. Yeah. You have a top lot. Yeah. What kind of facility? So that was just something that like, um, it's a little, it's almost like a little bit of a covered um, skate park and, and you know, uh, and uh, pump track, this, this, this bicycling thing they call it a pump track. Just something I found on the internet, kind of, it was just, you know, I don't know if we have enough space out there, but it was just something, what kind of area? Like, I like the white um, section, because like, like our neighborhood, like my son wants to ride his bike, he wants to ride it fast, and I'm psychotic, and I'm like running behind him, being like, stop, look for, look for everything. Um, so having a place maybe that's for him to ride his bike and he can go fast. Yeah. Oh, and there's also the, the, the trail kind of around the, the whole place. Trail. Yeah, I would like that. So, so, like, but that needs to get widened, I think, for like right. bikes with um, uh, training wheels. Yeah. So if you don't mind, what, I, what I'd like to do is go back one slide okay. and just give a minute of okay. sort of private contemplation. Okay. <laughs> if you want to maybe take five minutes and, and look at this and think it through and, and, and just so a minute I was kind of talking at you for a minute. Seven minutes. So and what do you just what's rock outcropping? Yeah, I have some questions okay. about what some of these are. Yeah. Okay, sure. The rock out the next ten well. Well all the bumps well. So it's like up behind the dog park? So no. Joe's? Um, yeah, it's where the house is and the yeah, that's, that's, yeah, oh, okay. that's behind my house. What would so you <laughs> it's, it's it's area and twenty. It just came up it's not a so it just I mean it's sort of integrated into the dog park right now, so I just, usually see the dog kind of running up in that. Yeah, so it's sort of integrated in the dog park, but what sometimes kids out there you can't really do a lot, I mean, unless you blasted the rocks away. So. Ship it. Yeah, so, like that guy wanted but, uh, to do that house up in my Yeah, there are there are <laughs> there are parks. I mean, uh, I was just there. I I, 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 yeah, I see the dog. Was in a so it's where they called slide hill parks. So they took their hills and put slides on them. Oh yeah, just so interesting. Yeah, a biggest slide that might be. You no, know, it was just something that that was kind of. A, so on the and on is benches bench on the playground equipment is benches like across the entire building, like, the entire park. Um, that was focused. There are a few benches inside the playground, and, those and then, are those. But is that what about the rest of the park? Um, so that that was sort of like separate things. Like people did, talking about having picnic benches versus there's benches sort of for parents to sit on or kids to sit on in the park itself. Like I mean, probably like from this thing, there's one here and one there. Yeah. There's one right there, there's one right there. Yeah, so, so that was, that was, there was kind of this list of things of, I mean, one of the questions on the playground is, do we just start all over and remove all the equipment there and do a whole playground design? That's a whole other thing. Joe, coach has a question? Yeah, go ahead. Do, do we use that storage container at all as I'm looking over? So, the you know, one of them's gone. Okay. Yeah, one yeah, of them's so gone. The concession yeah. stand. So, yeah, the concession stand one is gone. The, the storage container does have one. Like, uh, rooms and some bases. It's not as in bad of a shape, but everybody still hates looking at it. Um, the other one, now that it's gone, I can tell people, I spent like two straight days in there last year scrubbing it before the 4th of July. It was like, <laughs> well, I wouldn't tell you what it was. Okay, okay, so it was it's signs of life. Yes. <laughs> but it's gone now, which is, which is great. And then there's the other one. Did there. you see at Coimbley Park the new contest? Storage facility that Ryan and Mallory bought? No. It might be something you want to look okay. into. It's, it's, it's sort of like a small house. 
and it has a, a wide door. You can store things in there, but it's pretty. It's not ugly. Um, yeah, right. I want to check so. A little, like the little building if you had, yeah. you had yeah. a storeroom in there, right? That right. Was, so that was like the type of thing that could be storeroom. Uh, where are crosswalks are you guys talking about? Um, well, there's crosswalks, um, there's crosswalks on Granite on... and, and Jacob Street is what we're talking about. Is there any plans for a crosswalk that's like closer to Valley? So, um, I mean, there is, is this is the one. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm on Bowman, so we can come from Bowman. Up the right, right? Yeah, yeah, we go from Bowman, like up Bowman, and then okay. onto we Granite. Where the stairs are going to the dog yeah, to park, the stairs right? the So you, want, yeah. you could put a, a crosswalk there, right? Why wouldn't that be something the city would be responsible for? One in each for? corner of the park. Yeah, sense. I feel like, I mean, there are people who drive by there so fast, but so in general. That's, that's, oh my that's God. You're talking about over here? So that's just a problem. Like right here. Places. Yeah, yeah, up, yeah, up in the so upper right there. So those steps there or whatever. Yeah, just have a, where the steps are, have a crosswalk. And or maybe at maybe Valley and some yeah. traffic calming thing. There isn't there isn't a crosswalk right there now for whatever reason. Narrow so down. that could be added in. Yeah, that could be handy. So I mean that's beyond a little bit beyond the park project. So I walk down I live on Olive and so I walk down every day by the park. Right. So I'm intrigued by it. I mean part from the uh, crosswalk in there is like you can paint on the on the ground, but then you have to enforce it. You have to Yeah. You have to make sure people know that the crosswalk is coming and so the part of that is part of the things that the crosswalks that have already existed forever. Uh, we need to, I've been putting it from the traffic commissions, like, can we put up more signs that are like neon and so people, like this, like the one down there in front of uh, Dunkin' Oats, people were trying to use that and so we're like, all right, let's get some signs put up there. But in the meantime, let's put one of those temporary ones with a heavy base and it was put out to the middle of the street, yeah. like on the yellow line, which nobody should drive over the yellow line. Somebody ran over and dragged it 50 feet. Yeah. It's like, like well, that's good. it could have been a person. <laughs> so <laughs> part of it is people. Okay. Well, I think just once you get used to responsible. things, you ignore them. So like we have the one on the on the Sandy Street yeah. here at six thirty. No one slows down on that one. Even you know, even though it's raised and everything, people just speed over it because it's been there. I think the first so few good. days, everyone slowed down over and over. Maybe they slow down a little bit. I know what you mean. People still blast over, but oh, it's a little okay. bit. Never one thing though, okay. you could do is those like around near the high school now. They have that thing where they're they're making the curves sharper and stuff yeah. like that. All so that walkability stuff. We would literally, I mean, trust me, we could have an entire yeah. hour and a half on on pedestrian safety, uh, which is yeah, yeah, something I would go on about myself yeah. um, as a concern. So let's. Yeah. And then parking put it on granite. What does that mean? Like, does that mean like parking on? Because it's one. It's only one side of this parking because it's on the. I'm not sure which. Yeah, the, the part, the side of, of the par on granite, yeah, the side I, of the I think, park. I think there's, there's no people, parking right there, right? Yeah, I think there's just things people start to kind of put out there. Uh, for the water, water right. I mean, right. it's it's like, all, all, like right along where like the, the dog park is and the tennis courts, like that's yeah. all supposed to be no parking. Yeah. And I've, I've seen people parking and I've seen people like, do park police there. come in and all that stuff, which yep. the two I thought was Come along, stand along. Uh, yeah, people yeah, just park there because they don't want to walk at all. And then they're using the dog park. Um, and the only the only thing with parking is that you put it in the end, just put meters on it, right? Yeah, yes. so where would you be putting park like, where are you suggesting parking on granite mean? I think this is a concern. I think some oh, okay. people are concerned about parking. People always yeah. want more parking, but where are you gonna put it? Memorials? Yeah, and I think well obviously we're not gonna there's two them. at least. <laughs> so and my question is what is this on here? Does this mean like the there flat? can be getting rid of them? No, no, okay. I think probably so this isn't just like getting rid of things. Some of this is just uh, I make no change. change. Yeah. Make no change or keep them up better. So there's one here for um, uh, for for someone. Um, yeah. Some, uh, That's a war one. For and then, uh, yeah, like near the yeah, near the yeah. part. Yeah. And sometimes it gets the, overgrown, and, and yeah. it's you know it's uh, somebody's got to sort of let let us all know, and we go down there and we um, we, we do some maintenance on it, and then um, there's a community. Group that's that's been maintaining that one near the tennis courts, um, but uh, no, definitely not getting rid of them. It's, oh, it's, okay. it's sort of improving them and making sure that they're. Um, I'm going to. Well, you could suggest to get rid of it if you hate it. <laughs> you can always suggest. If you don't it, like, like it, you could accept it. But, but everyone will be like. But mostly, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, mostly that probably won't be too popular. <laughs> so as a parent, 
of teens. I, I think the comment too is there's not a lot for teens to do. I kind of like the idea of a skate park. I don't know where you would put it in this whole thing, but I think like basketball courts, skate parks are nice for the older kids. I like the skate park idea. Yeah. Well, yeah, the idea of making the tennis thing also have basketball. The problem with skate is you want some ramps and stuff. So I will, cause just where because. Put that? I don't know, that's what I was just, ah, cool. just because they're, they're, there's, there's folks aren't here and I know the neighbors around the park, I, I will just say there's a there's a counter yeah. sure. argument yeah. to it yeah, um, in terms of... I don't live here, so I can... Yeah, it. basic basically yeah. anything that would, would attract a teenager, they are... Um, there's going to be some pushback on that, yeah. um, just because that's going to create the noise. noise issue. And uh, okay. I created a noise issue when I was a teenager. Yes, <laughs> I'm not going to deny that. Um, that's why we want them, so the teenagers go there. Just, so right, there's, right? there's the kind of argument. Well, if it's if it's not here, I mean, those where the teenagers go? that exist, where are they going to go? Yeah. Can we do it where we know? Um, and, and yeah, and also, can you allay their concerns, right? If they're some, if they're worried about rowdiness or something, is that is that hours? Are you talking about a three p.m. after school? Because then, then it's right. not. You're not going to get as many complaints. Uh, yeah, so you're not going to get as much sympathy as, well, if it's 11.30 at night, okay, yeah, yeah now, now I understand. Right, yeah. I mean, I so live, I mean, we've lived since 91 next to Trapped, and we're talking about basketball or what? Just, well, just, uh, just teams, teams, you know? teams. Yeah. something to attract teams. Okay, you see but yeah, I mean, basketball is something that helps, that helps teams, and um, I always say, like, one basketball, you can, 10, 15 teams can play. I, I never had an issue with kids playing basketball. I don't know. I mean, maybe the neighbors across the street or whatever. I mean, and, and uh, yeah. I just said generally. Yeah. I said it's, I think sometimes it, attracting teams to the park or, uh, does have an impact on, on the neighbors. I, I'm just because the the immediate neighbors aren't here, and I'm, I'm just speaking sure. of, of that. Yeah. 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 And also, like the skate park would be loud. And any kind of okay. active use gets people pushing back against it because there's active use. Them, so you have to weigh that against. Well, now you have something that's more useful. Than this kind of slightly sad park. I mean, you see people always using the kid area, and then you see people on the field zone, and like you say, you get a little bit on the tennis, right? And so, so each of these things gets some. But I would say every day I see people in the kid area more well, so than this, this is one of the parks that's just plopped into a neighborhood, yeah. and yeah. you know houses here. Houses yeah, there, yeah, unlike uh, yeah. you know, Devil Park or or, or uh, Kirstead Park or or Roosevelt Park, you know, you don't have that many neighbors surrounding the field. So I, I can understand people with the pushback, with noise and everything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, teens are teens; they're going to make noise, and there's no way you could tell them, "Hey, keep it down, keep it down." There's neighbors around there; they're going to make noise. I mean, the same applies to a six-year-old or a three-year-old. Yeah. But not a tennis. Maybe the landscapers could come up with a plan, like if we surround the park with trees or something to cut down well, the noise. There's or even or there's even a scheme where if you you can actually set up a noise a sound that cancels like a light noise. Well, that teenagers have a more sensitive hearing range than adults. So they can actually put equipment in that will uh, discourage teenagers either all the time or certain times. Really. <laughs> Up on the dog park, at, we used to go to the dog park all the time with our dogs. We stopped going because there were always broken beer bottles and stuff like that up on the rock. Yeah, really? So I mean, there's, I mean, it's already attracting that without that kind of yeah. things oh. there. Well, that's, I mean, that's kind of exactly the point. I mean, they, they exist, you know. I mean, yeah. 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 I remember being a teenager and, and getting the feeling like yeah. the whole community wish it didn't exist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I mean, literally, just skip you know, when we moved there in 91, there was like parties every weekend up there. And we do, you know, if, if there's any, especially breaking beer bottles, we'll call the police right away. I mean, the thing is, it's been a legacy of broken. Yeah. We haven't done high rock, but once it's there, it's hard to get rid of. And so some of it is cleaning up. I mean, there's some. Uh, I mean, I think there's more like more of this these days than. than well, the dog park did just, did discourage, I think. Yeah, I, and I think. And it totally did discourage yeah, a lot of that. Yeah. Like that was an area where people did congregate, and just having the dog park there lessened it. Um, but there is someone using the wall there for beer, and there's like a whole. <laughs> okay, take up your guys, but it is. <laughs> so so I, I do agree though that the yeah. dog park has brought an adult presence in that's 
kind of dampened down the, the worst things. Um, I mean, it's not perfect, like, you know, like there's no panacea here. I mean, you have you know, kids you know, you know, do get attracted to. And just, turn, just, just to go back to the other so field for a second, yes. um, I mean, okay, yeah. brought up artificial, but the park grant, uh, is that even? You, I mean, the, 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 the park grants, you can't spend any, even a penny of park grant in anything related to a artificial turf field. So it's, if we pursue that, it's sort of not. And, and we're just in, in the midst of it's almost, it's not all the way but it, it's potentially uh, to be approved the, the Roosevelt Field of receiving artificial turf. And it's like if you're adding that much the, over there, like I don't think, you know, I don't think you need to take up all of the grass everywhere. One question about the field, though, uh, like so, the, the, you know, you could look at see a smaller scale backstop. The other question is the outfield fence itself. Um, you know, one of the things I mentioned in Everett, they they put in a field where um, the, what they have is a um, you can bring in a this field, Sacramento field, is uh, down in the village neighborhood down by Teddy Peaty Butter. This is actually a temporary thing, so they can move their baseball fence. So that's the type of thing. I mean, I think one thing with Trapton is that one reason to have an enclosed field there is it is a small area with busy streets around it. So you don't want the balls going out in the street so much. So, but, um, you know, it is one of those questions. Um, do you, um, you know, I mean, do you need a fence up there? I mean, that. And the that, condition of that fence right now, the concrete footings yeah. for the fence posts are just kind of bare so, and coming out of the ground and kids just, you know. Well, the fence around the tennis courts are like, yeah. Wobbled. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, so you need some repairs or, or replacement of the tennis courts. Um, but I, I guess there's a question. I, I you know whether you maintain. I mean, I think I'll probably be replacing that fencing all the way around the field, um, just so that it's enclosed and balls don't go run, whether it's soccer or not. Um, you know, I mean, the other thing is, would you? Square it out a little bit so that you could have you could have a soccer overlay. I'm trying to see where you could put the rectangle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know there's a. a I yeah. mean, you, you would you do it here, and then it would be close to the tennis the court. The smallest one. They're, they're, all, all, they're all different. They're all different yeah. from UH all the way up to. Yeah. I how, small. So. How I mean, I no, I've never done a bit of landscaping in the least. Um, mm -hmm. If we move the multi-purpose or like the field this way and then have more activity stuff up and maybe go a long ways like that way like turned it so it'd be more like rectangle that way and then have more stuff up here so i mean we could look at it if, if we're do you mean like this yeah, if you were to turn that that way in a way that would so be clockwise or counterclockwise kind of kind of kind of kind of oh yeah. Yeah. all right so do you wait hold on do we put home plate here? Kind of. Yeah. I mean, well then, so we we'll don't use, I mean, like that whole little section yeah. down here, we don't really use, this? right? We have that container, that's really it. But then you got to worry about balls hitting the kids in the playroom. Well, we can put the balls that Good way. Point. Yeah, it's also, you, you, well, like, when you have base, if you were to have baseball, yeah. like you want to be able to sit behind oh, yeah, that's true. home plate. Like, right. just, yeah, and there's also some sun angle things that you have uh, the. Home plates at a certain place, so not there yet. Baseball, so, so I'm like, so yeah, we're just trying to get the empty. It's, it's, it's not, you know, I'll show you team all. <laughs> not, I'm not there yet, so yeah, it's gonna so be all home. Some, but I think it's something we can ask the landscape architect to look at, like if we're not tied into a competition size so, little league field, you know. Is there another orientation of the field, or can you expand it or lay it out in a different way that you could still have, you know, practice field for baseball, and you'd still have some fencing there? But you know, is there more flexibility? Do so they still make but, those those soccer nets? I know when we were kids, I, I grew up in the boonies, but they were on these huge wheels and they were big, and you could like move them around, and they like pushed them all to like one side of the field, so then you could just have one in the left outfield and one on the right outfield, and just like play soccer that way. Yeah. yeah. With those, they wouldn't be used for that age group. They would be much smaller 
soft and nuts, which you'd be able to drag yourself. They're portable ones. But I know exactly, we have them at the football stadium. Okay, the high school so. use them. They roll nice. They're very, very easy to move. But you wouldn't use them for undrafted. You'd probably use something really smaller. So I guess I think we could we could ask the landscape architect, you know, if we're looking at a grass field that would be useful as a baseball practice field and for you know youth meet soccer, multi purpose, you know, how what would you look at in that type of thing? That that's something we could look at. Um, I, I, I just do want to ask to yeah, you guys are right. So please leave documented stuff with us. It's good to have a conversation, but I want to make sure we get it down. We do the video, which you can go back and look at, but um, make sure you take this and condense it down to something that is useful and um, provides some guidance. Okay. Um, I wonder, we did, haven't really talked about playground equipment. Maybe we could go over that in a little bit. I feel like that was fairly new. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, I, so just from, First person yeah. observations. There were like five kids on this one at once, and then four kids spinning them. Like there were kids all, and they all kind of kind of did. I don't know how safe that is, but they love it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how yeah, safe that is. They were going pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, this. The slide's a little scary though. It doesn't really have sides and stuff. This. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much friction that you just. Well, I mean the slide. I mean originally they had they had some weird slide. Yeah, they did. That, that was, it was like no you, you straddled it, and that they got rid of that. But then I, I think technically that slide doesn't meet safety zone requirements. They put that in after the fact. I don't, you know. So I don't know if that's safe. Kids climb up them and just pull the slide down. Oh yeah, I don't know. They haven't seen any kids have slides. How many times you the slide? How many times you would yell at the kids like? Right. Over and over again. Oh, it the that and where are your shoes? Yeah. So. <laughs> but it, it, this, More like space. I say, this was done in about 2007. So, I mean, usually you might look at a playground every 20 years. So it's sort of as a priority. Um, you know, it, it's. I mean, I actually like the old playground better, but it's it, whether this is a priority in the midst of everything else we're doing. I, mean, I guess that's the. You know, do we even? I mean, more. I would say just from a parent standpoint, uh, obviously, at least if you don't do anything else, if you just leave it, you know, obviously part of it's going to be doing things like refreshing the mulch and bringing it back up to right. Because right. the whole reason you have mulch in there is for cushion. Right. Okay. And, and a lot of those prices, you, you, you don't. Um, it's gotten way down. And I know they kind of come in and put some in, but it's not, it's not enough. you got to get in there and get a, a good cushion down to, to provide um, protection from impact. But I would say, Seeing for parents and shade. Yes. If nothing else. Yeah. Maybe a shade no. structure or something like that. Or just something. Yeah. Or even another picnic table. Something when the kids take a break to drink some juice boxes or somewhere to sit. Yeah, because there's a big tree over here. It's very yeah. crowded. Yeah. Can I throw out an odd suggestion? You usually do. Sorry. <laughs> I saw something very interesting in the Seaport District when I was working on a conference. They had an adult playground. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. And it was really nice, an, an adult, adult playground. playground. Oh, okay. You know, the, the, the swings were really nice. You could swing on them, and they had some seats that could rock. It was designed for adults, and it was really, really good, and it was heavily used when I passed through there. Just a thought. Maybe you might have a few things for adults to sit on, to ride on something, not just the kids, if there's room for that? Um, I know, um, we'll take it into the <laughs> Well, like some of the stuff they have at the Lawn on D is kind of cool. Yeah, I, that's what I think they Yeah. Have. I I... Lawn on D? It's right near the Heinz Convention Center? Oh, sorry. It's pretty cool. Is have you ever your garden? <laughs> Two time. I mean, I know there's like places where they have Jenga things and funky slides. Cornholes everywhere. Well, let's get digressed. But what? I find that it's votable. Cornholes everywhere. Oh. <laughs> it's fun. You can you can decide like like but we all did. We don't feel like doing anything physical, and we're gonna do yes. all the puzzle ones. <laughs> but you might want to just go visit Lawn and see it because I think the kids yes. even enjoy it. It's not it, it's made not adult size, but kids <laughs> go and play on it. You're gonna have to do one of those first. So. It's kind of older. 
Oh, this so, is actually a good point. So ADA stuff, and I think. Um, what does that mean, ADA? So I mean, there's, just, well, there's, there's kind of two levels. I mean, right now, I mean, the the bark mulch out there, if it's maintained well enough, will meet basic ADA standards. I mean, some parks they go to the rubberized surface so that you can more easily get to that. And then there's a whole other level of park where literally each piece of equipment is made ADA accessible. I mean, as a city. We're required to have a park system to have ADA accessible features. We're not required to have every piece of equipment be ADA accessible. So, um, so I, I get it's that kind of question. I mean, it's, having, it's, having, you know, you know, it's a good point to have, like, having more. You don't have to take. There's, any not, a, there's not anything that um, a kid in a wheelchair can go in. Right. Like, why don't we okay. have like the swing that has that the, the kids in the wheelchair can. I mean, there's one challenge with swings is that swings Space. need a lot of, we used to have a swing out there, but when they, re, one reason they will go with a tire swing is it doesn't take as much space. So, I mean, it'd be the type of thing, we could possibly look at like the, the, the place where the, um, the batting cage is, that could, we could look at and see if there's clear zone. Well, I've noticed, again, this is yeah. just anecdotal, yeah. it's not based on, yeah. but, but being, yeah. the, the, the swing sets, these days, get, it, it just seems like kids are less interested in the swings than they are the other type where they, you know, something. Uh, I don't know what other. Uh, if you have a good swing, and so, so, but it is one of the issues, like I say, swings to make sure they're safe enough take up a lot of the area. So yeah. that's one reason why when this got revamped, you could basically have a swing set or some other equipment. So the decision was one reason why you go with like that tire swing. Well, you do have swings over the corner. Well, big kid swings, yeah. yeah. So, but like a a, a, a swing a like a teenager or yeah. an adult, we did used to have that. And the, the challenge is that the modern safety standards, you could just you know a, 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 an adult and teenage swing set would probably take up three quarters of the area to have the safety zones and that type of thing. Because sure. sure someone could go flying. So, so that's that's one of the reasons why it's in a tight area. I know young disabled children would love something like a splash pad, though. Like mm -hmm. that, yeah, that, that so would that would be something nice. So like I said, when you have, I know, you know, we're um, a little bit with the Manchester, uh, actually in the Rockport schools, and their playground at their elementary school, I mean, literally you could wheel the wheelchair all the way up to the second level kind of thing. So they had long ramps, and, you know, if you have a lot of space, I mean, you can do that kind of thing. Um, I mean, like, that's just... Uh, I, I just put that in as a, as a, a, a thought to see. Um, but like I say, it, and especially if we were going the route of, of um, you know, if, uh, you know, uh, if we were thinking that we would do the whole playground, I mean, it could, you know, probably redoing this playground is probably maybe it's $120,000 to, to redo it. So, you know, that's the type of thing that it, it's it, it's significant enough. Like I say, this play equipment isn't. It's midlife right now. I mean, I don't think there's any major. Yeah, I mean, maybe add. Are so, so. those oh. things that you so. sit on that go side to side that are look like they're about to break still there? <laughs> yeah, like, like a little yeah. ambulance yeah. with a little horse. Those can go. Those can go. Yeah, those, yeah. <laughs> those are just <laughs> dangerous. That just hurts someone. That I see a kid smash his face every day. So I mean, I guess I get a sense that. Playground is, I mean, adding like a splash pad would but, give it a great, but, but that's only seasonal. Seem there's but like outcry for a whole new playground. Right? I, I mean, I don't as a, as a parent of kids, I, I don't feel it. I feel like it already has a lot going on yeah. that, that that is of mm -hmm. value yeah, so. use. Yeah. Uh, so. But more trees and being able to sit down. Yes. <laughs> more more. Yes. More see. So like the splash pad, how much does something like that cost to maintain and upkeep and all that stuff? I mean, is that going to be a huge chunk? Yeah, I mean, if that's part of the, that would be part of the design process to get to get good hard numbers on that. Right. You know, that's exactly what. So we put on the list of things that we would like and how much we like it, and then we say, okay, yeah. that's the the benefit. Well, what's the cost? What's the cost up front? And what's the cost to maintain? It is. Is it? I know we whittle that down. And would the DPW be responsible for taking care of it? So there is one at Lincoln Common that gets yep. used in that. I mean, I, I mean, I think that there's this thing like there's some types that recirculate the water. 
then there's a lot of maintenance associated with those, and then there's ones that just use use a little bit of water. Um, yeah, push there's less on. maintenance, but even that can use a, a, a you know significant amount of water. And and in any of these, because any time you have something that's involved with water and you know in valves and stuff like that, it's it, it becomes a maintenance issue. I, I know we did one in like the one park I worked in Gloucester, and the, um, you, know, you have electronic activators, and I mean this was a, the simplest one. It was maybe a twenty or thirty thousand dollar splash pad, and it was really difficult to keep. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I gave credit our operations people there got it running, but it was like you had a special control box, and we it was custom design back at the factory and we should have had it only go spray for five seconds and it sprayed for 10 seconds, which was too long. I mean, there's, yeah. you, you really need some it's expertise. My, it's it's yeah. my, um, my oversight, uh, or my mistake not to uh, specifically my body. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know much about it. We have no, yeah, yeah, Joe has come, come we have but, but, complaints. Yeah, more of a user of it than, than body yeah. boxes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I think it's something that you really need someone who's designed and operated them to make sure that they um, you know, are vandal proof. So it's a really long it, it's, it's, it's a real, <laughs> it's a real, yeah, it, it's a real, especially, I mean, they're, you know, like you see, I mean, you get these catalogs and like I say, you can fill the whole park up with sprint threads if you want, it's really cool. Well, is it Everett that just got the, the one in Everett's amazing. Yeah. So that, um, so that's Swan Street Park? Yeah, that's, that's so that's my, so, so I, 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 I had to say something. Well, I grew up in Everett, so that's that's my neighborhood. I grew up. That was my neighborhood park growing up. Oh, <laughs> so. You're like, oh. no, but it was. How much fun uh, had? It was not. Uh, it was not in the shape it is now. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Speaking of, uh, okay. that's a Friggin huge splash pad. Yeah. That's like a <laughs> massive splash pad. So I mean, I think it's something we look at and it, and it say that it is uh, it is a nice feature. They're very popular with kids. I mean, it actually helps on your park brand. Um, so. There's um, I went to Attleboro this past weekend in Attleboro Cape Park. They have a small little splash pad inside the Cape Park Zoo, um, and it's small enough that it's like it's not huge like the Everett one. The Everett one's gigantic. It's huge. Yeah. Um, and I feel like even the one over here is pretty big. The one in Cape Park is like a pretty small and it has kind of like a oval shape and had seating around it so parents could sit. And that was like a pretty good. Yeah, size. that's a good point. There's, There's different scales of these things. Yeah, it's it a good size. Yeah, honestly. So. I mean, it, it, you know, identifying it, you've got to bring the water line in. Um, like you see, then you have to have a, the spot where the controller goes, and there's backflow protectors, and it's and, and it is a specialty. Yeah, thing. remember that the, I mean, the whole neighborhood is on granite. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know how many feet down you go, and you're just right. hitting rocks. Yeah. That's my backyard. Yeah. And yeah. then just like having infrastructure when you like for the Fourth of July, the water's only once. So if we could get the water on the other side, we could move the the bouncy house things to the other side. Yes. We could get My son had a meltdown in different areas. <laughs> yeah, so if we can get electricity and water in different areas of the park, I think that I mean, I think that's just going to be an underlying theme. Yeah, we yeah. have to get that. Um, they were great. They are like, these. That water slide was the greatest. <laughs> yeah. It just got real money real fast. Super. Yeah. It got real money real fast. But it was we had people going out over there. I was the giving people, like, my card to go to um, whatever they went to, job lot or whatever, and come back with rubber mats in the middle of the party to sort yeah. of try to put them down. Yeah, and that worked for about 10 minutes until that got covered up. Right. <laughs> but, but just being able to move it to a different area, you know, that's would be so. Because that gives you a whole other literally. options for stuff. It was great. So the yeah. kids kept going. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah, well, it was hot. It was really hot. Yeah, yeah. And so that thing had a line. We, uh, just today I got confirmation we have the ponies. Oh, the ponies! You got pony envy? <laughs> no, we got we had ponies last year. We have we we did them under the trees. Oh, okay. the pony rides under the trees so, the, so they can stay cool. So I guess yeah, we're on the dog park, um, I mean, you, you used it. Um, is there any any thought of focusing on that for improvement in terms of a surface or? We yeah, haven't had the gravel no. was a terrible idea. No, so is it gravel? Yeah, I, I know. My dogs hated it. Like they stepped on it, they're like, yeah. nope. <laughs> There's something yeah. called rice stone that, like, my, so, my colleague like in Somerville. I definitely. I mean, yeah. again, in my opinion, and I don't. I just. I'm, I don't want to like. But okay, but I feel we should keep. I, I really would like to see it stay there. 
But yeah, I think they the surface is Yeah, there's it's something called rice stone that, that is the it's dogs. Like, it's like the cheap white stuff <coughs> that you buy at like landscaping stones. Oh really? So it, I should know, I go by yeah. it. But yeah, right so it's very rough on dogs' paws and so this yeah. rice stone it's it's more of a polished stone, so it's not as hard as their paws, but it's big enough doesn't get caught in their paws and, it and it also cleans up well. But it's expensive. It's a very it's a very also, does it get hot? I mean, the other thing that you know, like like Somerville, they, they were they, they actually then you spray the, the the dog park to keep down the urine smell and other you know, oh, so, wow. okay. so I mean, there's not shade there, unfortunately. So and I the mean, challenge, it's beautiful though. It's a what, great spot. Like it's perfect size. Like everything right. about it's perfect. So maybe looking at the surface of the dog yeah. park. You as a user, I mean, I didn't notice a big smell from the dog park, so I didn't know. I have a dog, so I couldn't tell you. Okay, so <laughs> I walk yeah. by, I walk by with my son on like a daily basis, and he loves to look at the dogs and say hi to them, but I've never really noticed a. I was just overly walking, dog smell or anything. Like that. I was walking through there, just I mean, five o'clock before, you know, and just take a final look at whatever. I didn't smell anything. I mean, definitely you see. There's a few here and there, but uh, yeah, it's not I mean, like, oh my yeah. goodness. I mean, I could say, though I would have liked to have had a meeting like this before they put it in. Yeah. Um, it hasn't, as being, you know, having it right behind my house, it hasn't been a big, big problem. And I think it, I would say it actually discourages teenagers from hanging out there and breaking bottles and stuff. So, so, um, anyway, so I think it, it net, it's been a net benefit for the fire so. The people also, who go there take real good care of it. You can hardly ever see somebody not take care of it. And if somebody's there and sees somebody, they always say something like, right. you're going to clean that up. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it gets a lot of use too, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty, it seems pretty good. Yeah, I so that, well, I mean, that is, <laughs> that is kind of a problem. It's, you know, technically supposed to open at 8 o'clock, I think. And yeah. Yeah, people do show up at like 6 o'clock. Yeah. So that's the and, biggest complaint. And, that's an issue. And, and why do people complain? Is because of parking and stuff? Well, the, the biggest complaint we had, we had at one of the meetings last year was that there's a person who, across the street, they own a dog. All and so dogs. what happens is when a dog shows up at 6 in the morning, their dog starts barking in their house. So, so if their dog is barking at the other dog, that's the problem. So it's, yeah, that's, so that's often tough, though. What are you going to yeah. do? Like, what if somebody walks by your house with a dog, right? Then, oh, no. So it, it was kind of a funny that's, problem that, you know, it was it wasn't, he wasn't complaining that the dog's barking, the dog barking, it was just that people were getting there early with yeah. their dog, that woke up his dog, and then, so it's kind of like. But yeah, I mean, you know, if you're living in a residential neighborhood, and, and, yeah. you yeah. know, I think saying, no. yeah. things shouldn't be starting before seven o'clock, yeah. you know? Right. So, yeah. I, I think it's eight o'clock there, but I think just in general, yeah. I think it's eight yeah. hard rule should be seven. Yeah, like yeah. I think, yeah, it's the, the, it, the park closes at 10, technically, so I think eight or 10, yeah, eight, eight yeah. or 10 p.m. I guess in that area. Because I don't like the time limits in that area. I mean, you're not. It's really just for the people who live around. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's, like, you it's have an area where there's not a yeah. bunch of It's open till 10 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> no. I thought it was until dusk till dawn. Like. No, it's open till 10 p.m. I think yeah, it's so, 10 p.m. Yeah. So, like I say, you know, I mean, it's lit. I mean, people do. You know, you will see people with their dogs till 11 o'clock. You know, but then it's like for me as a neighbor, then I can say 10:15 if there's kids up on the hill, I can call the police and say. Hey, Usually, good things don't happen after 10 o'clock at night. Oh, don't go so good. That's used as a classic but example. Yeah, so. like just because she's not doing anything. Yeah, so. I hate that. Yes. But, uh, so, how many So, I mean, right. please make sure, you know, list, list some, some stuff here. We've, I've, I've taken notes of what we've talked about, but uh, if you could take all this stuff and put it together. I guess the one last thing we Tucker, there's two memorials in the park, one to uh, Ed Garvin, a Marine who died in Iraq, and then Trapton, who um, he died in World War II. One. World War One. sorry, it's been 100 years. So um, I don't know, I mean, I think the Ed Garvin one is in pretty good shape, but the Trapton one is, you know, I always sometimes, would it make sense to put them together? Uh, I mean, I think my personal opinion is, I mean, obviously, we're, yeah. I would never want to 
them going anywhere, um, but just to make more of a commitment to, to, to keep them up. Can you get like a vets or Boy Scouts group or something? To, to there, there is a community group that, that yeah. is, um, you know, maybe people, both of whom who knew um, Eddie Garvin and, uh, and, and folks who didn't know him, but are. Yeah, and his family is still in the support. community, and so oh, yeah. they do. So they're keeping that one. Yeah, that was in very good shape this week. Yeah. So, yeah, so and then there's the little one right in that corner, right? What's the, um, it looks um, like then the there's the one for the one? playground, yeah. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, so no, like, that's a community. That? Yeah, that, uh, yeah, she's a community yeah. member. Um, and the, and the, the Long standing. She so she was sort of instrumental in saving the High Rock area. That was her big. That could be pretty. Well, bust up a little bit. Because it's kind of. Put, we can plant some stuff. Yeah, yeah that's it a good thing. Looks a little sad by yourself. Pretty flowers somewhere. I don't think there's any flowers at all in that park. No. The, no, the only flowers that are, are uh, at the, the veteran one. Hmm. Yeah, okay, sure. That does the flowers take a I would help, but I kill all flowers. So. <laughs> flowers are tough. I mean, flowers are real tough. We uh, last year at the, at the Maple Cleanup, we planted a lot, and we got um, I can't remember what kind of specific ones that should be pretty hard and stand up things, and they're gone. What about flowering bushes or something? Like yeah, that, like you want to pick up really exactly. So that's I mean that's another thing that yeah. we would Maybe use the flowers? expertise of somebody that says, yeah. look, you're going to have X amount of maintenance. Gravitate towards these types of plants because those are going to be easier to, to maintain long term. Yeah, like wildflowers that people kind of pull as weeds, just get some <laughs> yeah, no, Well, you know, there's there's nice ones that are, you can yeah. call them wildflowers <laughs> or weeds, depending. <laughs> and, and even so that's a good point with weeds. Like even you take some places that are in the landscape nicely and the and the plants are surviving fine, but like a couple weeks go by and it's just there's a lot of just stick weeds sticking up and you have a lot of land. Yeah. 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 Like, why are you watering that? Yeah. So that's that's good. Grass. <laughs> that was a so grass water yeah. somehow. Or I mean, that could be something to look at. So yeah. 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 Sprinklers, I mean, I but on that sprinklers, like if we were doing lawn, like the grass, it needs to be watered, and that would be, you know, like having an automatic sprinkler just kind of. I I think there were sprinklers there that are now. I don't know if there was ever sprinklers. I mean, there might have been water. I, I don't remember. That's in the that's baseball field? Yeah. I think so, because I've, I've, I've. And then they stopped working. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's. Yeah. It's something to think about, right? Place. So if we're talking about the maintenance of grass. It's a lot of work, and it, there's no shade. So you're going to need to water them somehow. And that might not be a bad thing to have to put in place. Yeah, yeah you have a sprinkle system on the Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, especially, I mean, though this is a use as much as Rose Belt. I mean, the charter school does use that on a regular basis. So um, having, you know, a, you know, irrigation can help you know, keep the lawn, keep the lawn nice. in better shape. Type of thing, so. Yeah. So, I, think, I think I think if the lawn's in better shape, well, what, what, I think a, lot, if more a, a mm -hmm. lot more people yeah. would use it if it's in better shape, yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah that's primarily like, whether or not we have, you know, you can really host X number of organized games is one thing, but just having it in good shape, making yes. it look good, and making it look inviting for the, for the people in the neighborhood. Um, yeah. Just, just families really would just use it more. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess we have to talk to Bobby Knox a little bit more, but I mean, certainly the fields get mowed. I mean, I don't know if in recent time. One of the key things is each, is a couple times a year for a field like this, you should. Area like you know, take the little machine, yeah, and they poke awesome. holes and throw the dirt up to get the oxygen down to the roots. I don't know how much the city does that. I mean, I think sometimes like Endeavor might be the little league that's doing that kind of stuff, or making sure that we um, do some type of fertilization. Uh, okay, so we're doing very basic lawn care. Of this you should do a neighborhood yeah, area so. party. Everybody come on a stick and poke the grass. Mm. Yeah, so, so I, I, that's the type of thing. Like I say, kids would love to. When, when, I mean, look when the kids, little league was there, they were doing some level of care that that's that's fallen off. So, but we can pick that up. Yeah, like, so, yeah, like so, obviously, yeah, so, yeah. The, there has to be a minimum amount of, of yeah. city DPW kind right. of maintenance of it. But to bring it from, yeah, you know, uh, 
workable or you know, bare minimum maintained to like really staying, um, staying in great shape, I think you, you can organize the community around that. Yeah, I can say just if the DPW can stick to the basic of mowing and maybe some fertilization, maybe then we can work right. as a community group. So and your sites are on the field. Yeah, that's it. You know what I mean? Just yeah. everyone yeah. out there. That's going to be part of the fourth. I want to ask about <laughs> mixing clover into the into the into the mix. Like you used to have clover as part of the grass mix in a lot of places, and they started to just get towards more. Because it's more. He's looking at you funny. Uh, what are you talking? A lot about? of people don't like clover. I I actually added clover seeds into our grass. Yeah, it doesn't make it. Why? Because they're hard. I don't know. We just we clover. used that cat, Kentucky bluegrass at McDonald Stadium. When it had grass field, I wasn't involved in any clover and stuff. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, that's it for a plane. Nice. I mean, that's for I mean, like a yeah. for a very one of the things that we're trying to do is, yeah. I mean, you're trying to use a New England mix, it water and it so it's hardier and, and, yeah. and resistant. And it but it, the challenge is if if you want to do that kind of mix, you don't, you can't really get that in sod. So you actually have to grow that grass, and so you might actually, if you grow your own grass, you have to fence off the field for at least a year. So that's that's one of the things, like at the Argentiana School where my granddaughter goes in Somerville, they decided to, Dave was a neighborhood park next to a school, they did a grass field there. It's been three years since they closed it off and it's still not, what about doing, that, a, doing sod and then, so this is, again, this is when you yeah, talk so to yeah. landscape yeah, yeah. What about like doing sod and then as time goes on, as you start to get bare patches over, over seed? Yeah, yeah, so that's what I mean, that, that, that's what I don't Right, so anyways, I just those are things like that we need that, that guidance for. So. I have bunnies and stuff like that. That's <laughs> very cool. But, but yeah, I, I think as you get, uh, but that's something, it sounds like the, the yield is, Courts, basketball courts, soccer, and baseball there that would be amazing. Like multi no. multi functional yes. right for both of those would be amazing. Okay. I think that'd be great. Yeah, more stuff we can do. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Joe, what were you saying most about the um, about the backstop? Was the backstop for like the different levels of ball? Was the backstop was the bad engagement? The bad engagement. Yeah, I, I yeah, didn't say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I put X next to the engagement. Same here. Yeah. Like T-ball and, and my Oh, with the T-ball and the uh, minor leagues, they don't need a fence in the outfield. Oh, they need an outfield fence. All Sorry, field. I thought they were the back stuff. Okay, yeah, they need Major fence. leagues would need a fence in the outfield to measure home runs. And but like say, I mean, I also said, you know, Shadley will know, like if we're going to do it as a T-ball and a minor league right. practice field, right. what level of back stuff okay. okay. we have. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, maybe then, yeah. you know, if it's, if it's not going to be games, well, yeah, um, then do we need the dugouts? No, and, and that, I, I think we, we do. Dugouts are just the trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I do think we need yeah, whatever the field, whatever oh, field. So you should have a fence all the way around it just because the topography of the site and the balls will tend to run into the street. So I think that's, but it is the type of thing of having a little bit more flexible field that's not so. One single use kind of thing was probably good. Yeah. All right. It'd be pretty much yeah. Better. Yeah. Oh, I want to thank you guys for for coming. Coming back. All right. Thank you very much. Now you guys know our names. We'll be here all the time. Okay. <laughs>